Coming up on Look Today, well, the New York City Ballet is trucking in sets and costumes and 1,000 ballet shoes. In preparation for the residency at the Saratoga Performing Arts Center, we were there today. Plus, Crandall Library is offering the free Summerland Concert Series. More on that coming up. And Lake George Park Commission receiving a $90,000 grant from the Fund for Lake George. We've got details. All ahead on Look Today. Welcome everyone, I'm Jay Ho Jackson and this is Look Today. Well, on tonight's program, I sit down with Terry Patacek. She's Executive Director for the Agricultural Stewardship Association. And we're joined by Rachel Dunn. She's Marketing Consultant for the Alliance for a Creative Economy, or as you might know, ACE. And they're here to talk about an upcoming farm tour that's happening in Washington County this Sunday. I also sit down with Michelle Madigan. She's Commissioner of Finance for the City of Saratoga Springs, and she's here to talk with us about the work she did to help save the city $1.3 million, as well as a new project called Maker Space. Plus, we've got your weather for the Tri-North Counties, but first, these headline stories. Well, in our lead story, yes, it's that time of year. New York City Ballet is trucking in sets and costumes, and believe it or not, 1,000 ballet shoes, all in, pre in preparation for their residency at the Saratoga Performing Arts Center. Well, the move-in began this morning, and it'll go through the night and continue all the way into tomorrow. This year's ballet lineup includes Romeo and Juliet, Something to Dance About, and Composer's Holiday. Now, one of the big challenges the ballet production faces is a short turnaround time with little or no time to practice the big, enormous set changes. Well, we spoke with Marguerite Mailer. She's director of production for NYCB. It, what's challenging here is the amount of time that we have to do it. You know, when you do it at home, we're going to do it several times before. Here, we're only going to do it twice before you do it for an audience. Oh, okay. So it's really, it's all it needs to be timed, and you have two set. You know, the set is split into two, and they can't see each other. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know, I'm usually there, I can be in a position where I can see, because the other guys can't see each other, and the stage manager is going through so many other things, that I'm often watching the set. You know, you may have noted there, do you see those orange, orange crates behind her? That's one one-hundredth of the number of crates that they have to wheel in there. They're all numbered, they all have to go to exactly the right location, then they all have to be fitted to the stage. It is really an amazing undertaking, I've seen it firsthand. All right, in other news, Crandall Public Library is a home for the free Summerland Concert Series. That's a second year for this. And it kicks off this Thursday with the Trebini Trio. That's a New York City-based quartet. And before you correct me, we will explain that. And the Summerland Concert Series is a real opportunity for members of our community to experience classical music. Now, the series runs July 12 to August 9. Today, we spoke with Carol Miner. She's Artistic Director for Summerland. This week we're kicking off our ninth season of concerts with the Cabrini Trio on Thursday, July 12th at 7 p.m. It's a free concert. Donations are appreciated. And these are three elite musicians from the New York City area. Um, the instrumentation is clarinet, bassoon, and piano. But the bassoonist, who's actually a member of the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra, doubles as a soprano. So you'll hear her playing bassoon, but also singing. So it makes for a really unique program. There you have it. Really, make it a point to see them, please. All right, switching from news to weather. Well, today saw temperatures in the upper 80s. We heard some thunder, got a little cloudy, it got humid, it got sunny. Real mixed bag. So let's see what Clarence has to say. For more detailed look at our weather, let's head to the Glens Falls Weather Center for a look at your first forecast. 
Thanks, Jesse. I'm your Rollins' Clarence Sponsor with your first look weather update on Look TV. Right now, we're going to experience high pressure still in control of our area. If you're making any beach plans along the coast, be aware we have Chris slated to become a hurricane later today and into tonight. It's going to make us slow northeast for track, and then the pace will accelerate as it goes further northeastward. It will avoid the U.S. mainland, however, we're going, thanks to the stationary front first, and then eventually this cold front that's going to go by, our main concern is going to be high pressure and plenty of dry weather over the next couple of days. But we have a few evening storms in our forecast tonight. 58 degrees will then go partly cloudy. We should go full sunshine in the wee hours of the morning. Then by mid-morning, we'll be in the mid-60s. Sunny, highs about 80, north wind at 7 to 9 miles per hour. Be sure to check the back seat. Those cars will heat up 20 to 30 degrees warmer in as little as 15 minutes compared to the outdoor environment. So with our high of 80 degrees, that's 100 to 110 in 15 minutes. So no errand is short enough. Stay safe, people. Mid to upper 80s, maybe about 90 in some spots by the weekend. Could see a 30% threat of showers and storms by Saturday. So keep your plans in check in case the weather does go bad. Lows will be a bit more humid after 50s for lows Wednesday and Thursday mid-60s by the weekend. That was your forecast for First Look Weather on Look TV. I'm meteorologist Clarence Ponsler. Now I send it back to you, Jesse. We're laughing here because we love Clarence, as you probably figured out. But we love these hot weather tips. That last one got us all by surprise. Check the back seat. I don't know what that means. Maybe you should already know what's in the back seat before you get out of the car. Back to the news. At their annual meeting, the Fund for Lake George announced grants that they were going to award to organizations with lake protection priorities. Big deal. Now, the Lake George Park Commission received $90,000 for their work in aquatic species prevention and milfoil removal. The commission was recognized for the important work they do to protect the Queen of American Lakes. Now, other recipients include the Jefferson Project, as well as other towns surrounding the lake, including Hague, Queensbury, Bolton, and Lake George itself. And the Fund for Lake George is a privately funded, not-for-profit organization dedicated, and I use the word dedicated seriously, to the protection of Lake George. Find out about the Fund for Lake George. Up next, I sit down with Terry Patacek, Executive Director for the Agricultural Stewardship Association. We're joined by Rachel Dunn. She's Marketing Consultant for the Alliance for a Creative Economy, or commonly referred to as ACE. And they're here to talk about an upcoming farm tour that's happening in Washington County. And I also sit down with Michelle Madigan. Now she's Commissioner of Finance, City of Saratoga Springs. And she's here to talk with us about her work to save the city $1.3 million, as well as a new project called Maker's Space. But first, if you see news happening, you want to share a story idea, how about join us for an interview? then give us a call on the hotline. The number is 798-8000. That's all the time we have for this edition of Look Today. We're running really tight on time. However, yesterday we asked you if you could tell us why you knew it was summer around here at Look Media. We got a ton of responses. We were really surprised. A lot of people said Saratoga Fair. You were right. We were going to have a whole bunch of Saratoga Fair tickets that we're going to announce next week. Someone said, oh, the summer guy. No, it's okay. But Lori Woodcock said, casual summer attire, a reference to the shorts that I have started to wear for the summer season. So, Lori, we haven't figured out what we're doing yet for you, but it'll be probably tickets for Saratoga Fair, and you get more tickets than anybody else. Um, we'll contact you on Facebook when we figure it out, and thank you for participating. Tonight on Look TV, Queensbury Town Board Meeting. Don't forget, tune in tomorrow night for the stories that matter to you. Good night, everyone.